doors to deliverance and vows about beings. Sabuti said, A doer of what is hard is the Bodhisattva, a doer of what is most hard, if he courses and dwells in emptiness, if he enters into the concentration on emptiness, and yet does not realize the reality limit. Exceedingly wonderful is this, O oh, well gone. The Lord said, So it is, Sabuti, for the Bodhisattva has not abandoned all beings. He has made the special vows to set free all those beings. If the mind of a Bodhisattva forms the aspiration not to abandon all beings, but to set them free, and if in addition he aspires for the concentration on emptiness, the signless, the wishless, that is, for the three doors to deliverance, then that Bodhisattva should be known as one who is endowed with skill in means, and he or she will not realize the reality limit midway, before his or her Buddha dharmas had become complete. For it is this skill and means which protects him or her. His or her thoughts of enlightenment consist in just that fact that he or she does not want to leave all beings behind. When he or she is thus endowed with the thought of enlightenment and with skill and means, then he or she does not midway realize the reality limit. Moreover, while a bodhisattva either actually contemplates those deep stations, that is, the three doors to deliverance, or becomes desirous of contemplating them, he or she should, in his or her mind, form the following aspiration. For a long time, those beings, because they have the notion of existence, course in the apprehension of a basis. After I have won full enlightenment, I shall demonstrate dharma to those beings, so that they may forsake their erroneous views about a basis. As a free agent, he or she then enters into the concentrations on emptiness, on the signless, on the wishless. A bodhisattva who is thus endowed with his thought of enlightenment and with skill in means does not midway realize the reality limit. On the contrary, he or she does not lose his or her concentration on friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and impartiality. For, upheld by skill in means, he or she increases his or her pure dharmas more and more. His or her faith, etc., becomes keener and keener, and he or she acquires the powers, the limbs of enlightenment, and the path. Moreover, a bodhisattva reflects that, For a long time those beings, because they perceive dharmas, course in the apprehension of a basis. And he or she develops this aspiration as he or she did the former one entering the concentration on emptiness. Furthermore, he or she reflects that by perceiving a sign, those beings have, for a long time, coursed in the sign, and he deals with this aspiration as before, entering the concentration on the signless. Furthermore, a bodhisattva reflects, For a long time have these beings been perverted by the perception of permanence, of happiness, of the self, of loveliness. I will act in such a way that, after my full enlightenment, I shall demonstrate dharma, in order that they may forsake the perverted views of the perception of permanence, of happiness, of the self, of loveliness, and in order that they may learn that impermanent is all this, not permanent. Ill is all this, not happiness. Without self is all this, not with a self. Repulsive is all this, not lovely. Endowed with this thought of enlightenment and with the previously described skill and means, taken hold of by perfect wisdom, he or she does not realize the reality limit midway, before all his Buddha dharmas are complete. He or she dwells thus, and he or she has entered the concentration on the wishless, but he or she does not lose his or her concentration on friendliness, etc. For, upheld by skill and means, he or she increases more and more his or her pure dharmas. His or her faith, etc., becomes keener and keener, 
and here she acquires the powers, the limbs of enlightenment, and the path. If a bodhisattva raises the following thought, these beings also have for a long time been in the habit of coursing in the apprehension of a basis, and even just now they do so. They have for a long time been in the habit of coursing in the apprehension of a basis, and even just now they do so. They have for a long time been in the habit of coursing in the perception of signs, in perverted views, in perceptions of material objects, in perceptions of unreal objects, in wrong views, and even now they continue to do so. Thus will I act that these faults in each and every way may cease to be in them, that they will be inconceivable in them. If a bodhisattva brings all beings to mind in such a way, if he or she is endowed with this recollection of all beings, with this production of thought, and with skill and means, if he or she is taken hold of by perfect wisdom, and if, endowed with all these qualities, he or she contemplates the true nature of those deep dharmas through their emptiness, or signlessness, or wishlessness, or through their being unaffected, unproduced, without birth, without any positivity, then it is quite impossible that such a bodhisattva, who is endowed with such a cognition, could either fall into the unaffected, or become intimate with what belongs to the triple world. That cannot possibly be.